Hello everyone! Welcome back for the second lesson of this chapter. Today we're going to explore the filter verb. Last time we saw how to drop variables, so columns, using the select function. And now we're going to see how to keep or drop different rows, so your data entries, using the filter verb of the Dipler package. Being able to make subsets of your data or to drop any abnormal data is a really important step of data wrangling. So let's start. For today, we have a series of learning objectives. The first one is to be able to keep or drop rows using the filter verb. The second one is to be able to specify conditions on different numbers based on operators such as greater than, less than, equal to and not equal to, combined with the verb filter. The third is to be able to filter rows based on different conditions. So it would be either with an AND logical operator with the ampersand or with the vertical bar representing the OR operator. More on this, more on this later, no worries. Then we will also be able to negatively filter out, so that, it, that means we will drop rows using the exclamation point, just the same as for select. And then finally, we will also see how you handle rows that have missing values. And so for anyone who's already done data wrangling or who has already heard of it, you know how important this is. So our data for today is the same as last time. We're going to be working for, throughout the entire course with our Yaoundé COVID-19 data set. So let's start by loading it in and making a subset of our data set using the select verb that we saw in the previous lesson. In code, this means that we're first going to read in our CSV and then select the different variables that we want to keep to have a smaller subset easier to work with. So here we go. So how do we use the filter verb? Well, we use the filter verb and the condition to keep or to drop rows. So a very classic example is to, for example, only keep the mail records. So in our code for a Yao subset, this would look like this we would filter to only keep the records where the sex of the patient is equal to male. And if we look at the results of this, we see that now we still have our 10 variables, but we only have 422 data entries instead of roughly 971. Something important that, you need to that I need to highlight for you in this example is that we are using an equal sign, which is equal equal, rather than the classical assignment equal sign, which is a single equal. A useful thing that we can do is that we can chain filter with n row to know how many rows in our data set are fulfilling this condition. So coming back to the example above, if we look uh, if we want to know how many of our data entries correspond to mail records, we would change with n row, and we would see the same thing as what I explained before, that there are 422 data entries, so 422 rows that correspond to mail patients. So now it's time for your first practice questions on this chapter. I hope you're excited to use this new verb. And your two practice questions are, so the first one will be to filter the Yao data frame to respondents who were pregnant during the survey. And you store it 
in Q1. So you would be using potentially the is pregnant variable. And then the second question is, how many respondents were female? And for this, I suggest that you try and imitate the code above with the filter function and then the nrow function. Give it a go. See you in a bit. So welcome back. I hope you enjoyed your first interactions and hands-on practice with the filter verb. Now we will move on to the part of our lesson which is about relational operators. So actually, you've already seen a relational operator. It's the one with the double equal. And I can now present you a more in-depth list of the different operators that you can find. I would suggest that you take your time and you pause the video and you have a read over them because there are many of them and I can comprehend that uh, you need maybe to kind of integrate them. You, some of them are intuitive, you may have already seen them before, so greater than, uh, smaller than, um, not equal to. You may have the in operator, which is a bit more enigmatic, let's say. And then for, for those of you who maybe need um, a more visual representation of some of them, I invite you to have a look at this. So this is the fact that we want to select not A. This is the fact that we want to select A or B. This is if we want to select A and B. Um, this is if we want to not select A and B. It's things that you, it's useful to have under your elbow when you're working. That way, if you have a doubt about what you want to do, you should visualize it and you can look at this and understand what it is you want to keep, what it is you want to drop, and think about this red area, where it is and how to write it up with these different relational operators. But now, enough with uh, tables and visuals. Let's see how we can use these on our data. So, I will give you a bit of a multiple examples of how you can do this. You can filter using the not equal to male, so this will keep all the data entries for females. You can filter using the fact that age is smaller than six, that means you keep everyone who is younger than six in your data set. You can filter with the age superior or equal to 70. So there you will only keep the old people in your data set who are older than 70 or who also are 70 because you have the equal that is included. And then you can also have the in operator which allows you to select different levels of a variable. Here, for example, you want to keep respondents who have their highest level of education that is equal to either primary school or secondary school and nothing higher. So for this, you would use the in operator here combined with the C function listing the different things you want to keep. Now, after this uh, prolonged demonstration, it's your turn to put this into practice with two more practice questions which I'm delighted to present to you. So, the first one is that from the Yao subset, you will keep only respondents who were children. So that means under 18 years old. Then, you will also use the in operator to keep only respondents who live in the Tsinga or Mesa neighborhoods. So keeping only those that live in those different neighborhoods. Welcome back. I hope the practice questions went well. I hope that you feel a bit more familiar with the relational operators and that you might feel confident, maybe try a few others, a few more, and uh, really try to just play around with your data. That's usually the best way to start to understand how these work. And um, if you have any other issues, don't hesitate to ask questions. 
Now we're moving to another way of using filter, which is combining the filter verb with different conditions using the ampersand or the vertical bar, which are more commonly known as the and, the and, and the or operators. So this, the reason for this is that a single filter verb can incorporate multiple conditions. And if you were to classically write this out, you would write these conditions separated by a comma. In the code, this would appear as so. So here, from the Yao subset, we would filter for the is pregnant variable equal to yes, and the is smoker variable equal to x smoker. So keeping people who were pregnant and who used to smoke or who qualify themselves as ex-smokers. You can see that here there is a comma between them and the comma is going to be replaced automatically by the ampersand, so the and condition. It's better practice usually to write the and operator because it's clearer what you intend to do with the data and how you're formulating your condition. So for good practice, even though it's not necessary for the code to run, I would suggest that you rewrite the code above, so these two conditions of pregnant and ex-smoker, with the ampersand. This way, it's really clear that you want to filter and keep only the data entries that satisfy these two conditions. After this clarification about the ampersand, we can move on to another relation, relational operator, which is the OR operator. So when you want your condition to be that either condition A or condition B is satisfied. You don't want it to be both, you just want one of the two. So if we take once again our example from before, if we were to write our filter but with an OR condition, which you can see here with the vertical bar, instead of the AND, which we had previously, this means we want to keep people who either they were pregnant, so is pregnant, yes, or they were ex-smoker. And once again, I can only encourage you to have these little diagrams underneath your eyes to remind you of what it means. And let's do a few practice questions because we're introducing a lot of new content, so it's really important to practice it out step by step. So our two questions for this section will be to filter Yao to only keep men who tested IgG positive. So there are two conditions in there. I'll let you think about it. The second question is to filter Yao to include just children, so under 18, and those whose highest education is primary school. So once again, two conditions, I'll let you think about it. Let's move on to the next part of exploring our filter verb, which consists in negating conditions using the exclamation mark. So this should be familiar to you because it's similar exactly to select. So it means that when we want to negate, we wrap the condition with the exclamation point and the parenthesis to say we want the opposite of this condition. It's called negating. So let's see how we would write such a condition to, to basically drop respondents who are children, so who are less than 18 years old, and or respondents who weigh less than 30 kilograms. What does this look like? How do we negate this or condition? Well, in the code, you will be writing up something like this. So you will have the two conditions that I just read out. So the age inferior to 18 for children, 
and the weight inferior to 30 kilograms. It will be an OR condition, so with a vertical bar, but you're adding the exclamation point and the parenthesis around both of these to show that you actually want to drop people who satisfy these conditions. Let's look a bit more into how we use this. You can combine the exclamation point with the in operator to get a not in functionality. So this is very interesting. If we want to filter the highest education variable, and we want to this time exclude people who only went to primary school or secondary school, then we would write our condition, the highest education in primary school, secondary school, and we would exclude these people using the exclamation point. So once again, it's the same thing. It's writing the condition and then negating it using the exclamation point in front of it. So one thing that I now want to get into, it's that it's easier to read filter as a keep statement. So if you want to keep respondents who are, let's say, below 18 and who weigh less or who weigh less than 30 kilograms, then this is what, how you would write to keep it. But then if you, if you want to actually drop them, well, you know that dropping means negating the condition. So as we just discussed, it is the idea that you would then wrap this condition in the exclamation point and the parenthesis. And this would make that you would drop respondents who are under 18 or who weigh less than 30 kilograms. So it brings us to the code that I explained above, which is to have this or condition encompassed in the parenthesis with the, with the exclamation mark. Take your time to digest this and to understand how it works, and then have a go at it with our question number seven, which is, please drop the respondents who live in the Tsinga or Mesa neighborhoods. Think about this, let's say, dropping, keeping logic, and have a go. Hello again. I hope that your attempt for using uh, this negation of conditions went well. It's time for one of the last parts of our course, which is about NA values. So um, everything you've seen up to now does not work for NA values. So let's make a little data set to illustrate this. We're going to make a Yao Mini where we're going to select only certain patients. So we're going to select the patients 1, 11, 50, and 2. And the reason for this is because it gives us many different variations of the variable sex and is pregnant. So as we know, women can be pregnant or they can not be pregnant. And men cannot be pregnant, whatever happens. So either the response for females can be yes, it can be no, or it can be that they do not reply. So we don't know. It's a bit like an NA. And then for men, it's automatically indicated as an NA. Now let's see how we're going to manipulate this Yao Mini. So what if we try to select the NA row using the double equal operator? This is something that we saw at uh, the beginning of the lesson, and this is how we selected male respondents. So let's try two different things. Let's try to select the NA row, so for the man here, either by putting is pregnant equal equal to NA, or is pregnant equal equal to NA as a string. Let's see, let's see what happens. Well, you'll see that both 
They don't generate an error. This is really important. They don't generate an error. They generate you an empty data frame. So this is a bit the worst situation because you don't have an error message, so you don't know that something went wrong. And uh, you get this empty, empty data frame. So basically what you tried to do didn't work and you weren't alerted. And this is okay because we're looking at what comes out. But what if you're in a hurry and you go through everything and you don't look and then later on you get bugs and you don't understand why? Well, this is really something that it's important that we stop and we address what goes on with this. So why do we get this zero size data frame? Well, the reason is that NA is a non-existent value. R cannot evaluate NA as equal or not equal to something else. It just doesn't understand what NA is. So that's why we have the special isNA function, which comes to our help. So let's look at this now. If we apply isNA to our mini Yao dataset, what, are, what will be our result? Well, here we get what we want. We get that row of the male subject, which has NA as a value for is pregnant. This is the correct way of extracting them. And then on the other hand, if you want to negate, so the condition, meaning you want to take all the rows from Yao Mini, which are not NA for is pregnant, then you would type up your code as such. Here, you see that we're negating the condition with the exclamation point, and we want all non-NA for is pregnant. When we run the code, well, we're very happy because we can see that we only have the different entries for is pregnant, which are non-NA. So now, it's your turn to practice what you've just seen. Let's, uh, let's do a practice question, number eight. I will ask you to keep all the responders who had missing records for the report of their smoking status. So I'll let you think about what this means, about which variable you want to use. Uh, it's about missing records, so that means NA values, so remember to use the right function, and see you in a bit. Wow, you can be super proud of yourself. Today, you have learned a lot in this lesson. We've looked at different let's say, relational operators like equal, equal, above, greater than. We've looked at logical operators, so the ampersand and then the vertical bar and how those are represented as and and or conditions and how those work. So you are all settled in to know now how to select your variables, how to filter for your different rows. But what if you want to transform some of your data? What if you want to create new data? Well, that's where another basic data ranking verb comes in, and this is what we're going to see in the next lesson. So see you there, see you soon, and thank you so much. Bye-bye. For more resources, visit our website, where you can track your progress, access interactive quizzes and lesson notes, and connect with our teachers and other learners like you. And if you'd like a more guided experience, we also offer live online boot camps with expert help. So join us at thegraphcourses.org to start your learning journey today.